Hi, I'm Keith Esserick. I'm with the Care Starts Now. I'm Trent Hummel. I'm a pediatric neuro-oncologist at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and a board member of the Care Starts Now. I want to talk a little bit about uh, DIPG and symptoms of DIPG when mm -hmm. you're initially diagnosed. What, uh, what, how do patients normally find out about this or what, what kind of spurs this on? Um, most time, again, most patients are in the younger age range and most patients have headaches. They have vomiting and then sometimes the vomiting occurs in the early mornings or late at night or waking up. Vomiting that wakes people up is always concerning. Um, they can also have uh, double vision. Um, and sometimes those young patients can't always say, I have double vision, but yeah. they, this, they can't see right. Or they'll be running into walls where, um, you know, they'll be walking normally and then, then you, they become more clumsy. You know, become what we call ataxic, where they're sort of wobbling back and forth when they're walking. And that, and that plus a combination of them not being able to see well because for some, some of the pressure that's in, in their brain from the, from the DIPG causes them not to see well and they run into things. And also, as you pointed out, being able to talk as well mm -hmm. uh, with that and, and be able to explain some of their, their right. symptoms as well, which right. makes it very difficult Absolutely. to try to figure out what it is. Right. Um, within uh, DIPG as well, um, you know, it's, it's, you also notice it's not always going to be a routine you know, type of symptoms too. Right. Um, we it's we, we very, do find very... out that obviously where it's at in the ponds yeah. affects many different things. And so what you think may be a sign of the IPG may not necessarily be that. Right. Um, within, uh, within that, I mean, that's got to make it very difficult to diagnose. <laughs> it is. And that's sometimes why you see delays, so to speak, in, in the diagnosis is because some of these symptoms, you know, you you may not have the neurological signs on a neuro, neurological exam. So on your, when, you, when the patient goes to the primary care doctor and they do a cursory neuro exam, and that neuro exam is fine, but if it's only related to the vision and you don't, you know, and you don't check that, then that can sometimes lead to a delay in diagnosis, which is unfortunate. And, and that's, that's actually very common uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of DIPG patients where they will say, this took several trips. Yeah back and forth, and, and that's because it doesn't really follow a, a routine path to it. Right. Um, and, and it would be overly scared about it. Obviously, at some point, there'll be an MRI, most likely, mm -hmm. which will confirm your diagnosis, but uh, we just, you know, it just takes a little bit of time, time to get there. Time to get there, there. right. So, um, with uh, DIPG also, uh, as you go through the, the diagnosis phase of it, um, there's also some that are diagnosed, and it's purely by accident maybe they, yes. they also just decided to get an MRI because they were injured or something like that um, falling off a horse yeah and, and, and sometimes that happens and, and and they find it because it did an MRI had nothing to do with any of the right. symptoms of that do we find that um, those patients who you know kind of have the the lack of symptoms mm -hmm. that they may have a little bit better time and uh, and and prognosis scenario with the IPG. Sometimes they do. Sometimes everyone, every patient's different. But in general, the lack of symptoms upon diagnosis does um, tend to be a little bit a little bit more favorable prognosis. Um, but uh, it really depends on each individual patient. 